Okay, so that's our import range. So a couple of things we did so far. We just did an import range. We figured out that when you do an import range, well, uh, one thing you should do is instead of doing D2 through D, which is what I was just doing actually a second ago, you should just refer to the name of the tab first. My formula a second ago, actually, if I undo a couple of times like this, should have been instead of doing this, it should have been 2017 exclamation sign and then go on this one same thing from the same tab exclamation sign so now I don't have to worry about adding a column or adding a new tab so now the next thing we're going to do is import range from here and from 2016 so this time I'm gonna want my total sales for 2017 and 2016 combined. And to do that, I'm gonna go back here. Now, this is gonna be different depending on the way my data is structured. If I know that my columns are gonna be the same names and labels in all of these tabs, then I could just combine those ranges and get as one range. But if I'm thinking that we could just go and add a new column to 2017, but in 2016, we're not going to add that column, then I couldn't just take this and say, let's take that and put this below because now the columns don't match. So again, how do we take care of this situation? Well, it's kind of the same thing. So if I go back here, this index gives us cost of goods from the first tab. That's inside of this sum function. Let's space this out. So this is my parentheses for sum, this parentheses for sum, and this was that index function that was returning me that column. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna copy that index function, and I want to combine it with another one that's gonna go and find stuff from 2016. So there are a couple of ways to do that. If you're doing inside of a sum function, you could simply just go in the end here and after you did this first range, sum function can actually have multiple sum ranges. So you can just do a comma and provide your second range to sum. So I'm just pasting that same range. And then all I have to do is instead of saying 2017, I'm gonna say 2016. Now notice that I don't have to change anything else in my formulas because it's still gonna go and search in the list of columns, which column it is in 2016, and it's gonna import my range. So I'm gonna use exactly the same formula. I'm gonna hit enter. That's my number from both combined. And this will work no matter what. If I just go back and add a column here, that column isn't here, right? It wouldn't matter. If I want my sales and cost of goods, here we go. We're getting our numbers. Now, if your formula doesn't support this way of just comma separating ranges, so again, very carefully, sometimes doing extra spaces here could be helpful to separate things. So that was my second index from here through here. So I'm gonna cut that. And this is what it was before. So let me actually delete this for now. So your second option is to just combine them with an array. And the way you would do it, I would just go and do this. I'm gonna copy this index. And before it, I'm gonna do this curly bracket before this first range. Then do a semicolon and paste my second range. And then I'm gonna close that curly bracket. Now, if you had a third range, you could do another semicolon here and paste another semicolon and paste. And in the end, do your curly bracket. This second index is the same formula. Now I have to update it to 2016, which is the name of the second tab. I don't have to update anything else because everything else is dynamic. So I'm gonna hit enter, gets me the totals. So I'm good. Okay, so that's that. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this column. That shouldn't affect our formula at all. Perfect, that works. And that's our import range when we have to import stuff from one file. Now let's also add a third tab to this calculation. So we did our 
2016 and 2017. Now let's say we also want to add our 2015, which is from a completely different file. Okay, so I'm gonna go back here. Now, first of all, I'm gonna simplify this formula instead of using this array syntax here. I'm just gonna comma separate those. Good. Let's delete the second one. Now this is more simplified. So we have the first, what we have an index function and the second index function. Now, if the third index function is coming from a completely different file, go here, copy this, comma, and paste another one, which is not drastically different. So now I want to just say this is 2015. So that includes that column from that other tab. And at the same time, I need to change the reference for the file because this is coming from a different file. So this needs to change. So I'm gonna go back here and get the name right there, copied. And again, you can just get the whole link. It's already too long. I don't wanna make it longer. So I'm gonna paste it right here first in those codes. And then I also have to replace the second one. And actually, yeah, second one, paste. And that's from our 2015 file and a tab is called 2015. So update it, hit enter. And what's gonna happen now? Well, why this doesn't work? Because I just did import range function from a file that I'd never used before. I can't really do that that is not going to work. So I need to first do an import range function by itself separately. So import range. And I need to use that URL for that spreadsheet and give it access. And then we'll do, let's say A1. I'm just doing this to get access. So I don't have to worry about the range. Hit enter. Now that's gonna ask me, do you want to give access? Sure. And see, as soon as I did that, this worked. So again, the first time you need to make sure I can delete this now. You need to make sure that you give it access with import range function every first time you're trying to import data from another file. And now that's our total from three files combined. So you can see how that formula got long really fast. You could just do this with a regular method without index and match and all of that. And it would look a lot simpler. So let's actually do it that way so you can see how it works. So I'm gonna just take this or let's just take the name of the file right here, copy, go back, import range. So that's my spreadsheet URL and the range was column D. So D2 colon D. Now, obviously, you can do D2 colon D13. Close that. Let's make sure we do the tab name, 2017, exclamation sign. Great. That should load that column. So I'm going to copy this and start my sum function. So in my sum function, I'm going to first paste the first import range function, comma, then the second one will be the same file, only the tab name is 2016. I believe it's the same column D, so we should be fine. Comma and paste. For the third one, it's this file. So copy. Paste. And it's 2015 column D. 2015 tab, column D. And that is closing this. We need to also close this sum function. So another parentheses here, hit enter, and this should work just fine. So this should be more simple, I guess, formula than the one I did before. But it's also prone to errors. You may also decide to use an array. So you can just combine your ranges with this array syntax. So semicolon here, 
semicolon here and curly bracket. So that should work just fine too, no problem. And if you do this, you're not limited to a single column. You could do this with multiple columns. So if you're importing, say we're not doing some, we're doing something else. So I'm just gonna remove that from here. And I hit enter. Now what you're gonna see is this. See, I'm entering the first range. And if I keep scrolling down, some point, see I'm getting those other numbers. And the reason this is happening is because we're including all of these blanks in the bottom. Keep that in mind. With something like sum, it works just fine. Just know that that's the way it works. Now you're also not limited to a single range. So you can say from A2 through G13. So if I go back, Then I can do another A2 through, so I'll just do G13. And again, A2 through G13. So now it should just combine all of those together with one range. So if you had to do this in a VLOOKUP, you could just use this entire array in your VLOOKUP. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about here with import range is that once you start working with very large files, you may find this problem. So you go and do your import range and you provide your spreadsheet. And you say, well, it's gonna be coming from 2017, single quotes, from A2, or A1, doesn't matter, through G13. If you have a lot of data on the other tab, this G13 could be G400,000. Well, probably not 400,000, but let's say 40,000. The number could be really large because you may have a lot of data on the other tab. And at some point, you're gonna hit a limit of how much you can import from the other file. There seems to be no exact limit. So uh, when I looked into this, I've tried to import ranges from different cells because originally I thought there is a limit to numbers of cells you can import from another file. But I was able to import over 300,000 cells from one file when from another file, I could not get to 300,000. So it seems to me like the limitation is in bytes as a size rather than as number of cells. But wherever that limit is, at some point when you hit that limit, it's gonna say that your data is too large. So you cannot import it. So what do you do in those cases? So what you can do, you can split your results into multiple batches. So what I mean by that, what if I do instead of 40,000 here, let's do 20,000. So for me, I'm gonna do 10 or five. So I do that and it works. So at this point, you usually want to find where is that limit. So once you found it, so let's say you found that I can successfully do up to 7,000 or whatever, A1 through G7, right? So the rest doesn't work. As, as soon as I'm adding more, I'm getting an error. So what I could do in this case, I could just take this import range, copy it, put a curly bracket in front of it, and then I'm gonna do semicolon and paste that same thing again and put a curly bracket after it. So I'm doing an array combination. And then for the second range, I'm gonna start from A8, which is the next row after the last one I could import. And then go through wherever I need to go, G13. And this way it actually goes through so as long as it doesn't exceed your limit of currently 2 million cells, you should be fine. It works. Now, if you're not able to combine them with two batches like I'm doing here, you may have to split them in multiple batches. So you can go, let's say the first one goes from A1 through G3, and then the second one is gonna go right after the third row, right? So it's gonna go from A4 through G3. 
seven, and you can just keep chaining this. So I'm gonna copy that import range. Not 17, seven. Okay, and again, semicolon, paste again. And after seven, we have eight. And let's say we have 13. It will still work. And I think that should cover everything we need to know about import range. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.